Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Snook with section 7.5, Proportions in Triangles. This is our last section in chapter 7. And what's going to happen in this section is we're going to have triangles that have a segment splitting them. And then we can write some uh, ratios dealing with the different side lengths of these triangles as they're split into different pieces. Our first one is the side splitter theorem. And what the side splitter theorem says is if you have a triangle that has a segment that's splitting it, and notice these segments are um, parallel. The segments are parallel to the base. And what happens when you do that is you can write a ratio relating the distance between here, x and r, to the distance between q and r, and notice that is one ratio. And on the other side of the triangle, we can also relate the distance between s and y and q and s. That's the other side. We call that the side splitter. So let's do some problems with the side splitter. So here I have in this triangle, I'm looking for the value of A. And I have a segment in here that's parallel to the base, so I can use side splitter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate A to A plus 4. So A over A plus 4 is going to equal 12 over 18. And I get that straight from the side splitter theorem. And then, just like before, I'm going to cross multiply and solve for a. So I get 18a equals 12 times a plus 4. That's the cross multiply. Now just use your algebra skills and solve the equation. 18a equals 12a plus 48. And a equals 8 in this triangle. Now take a look over here on our second triangle. This time we know about the length of that segment and the length of the base. I can still do my side splitter. I am going to do 8 over 10 is going to equal 8 plus x over 15. So what I'm doing here is this one over this one is going to be the same as the whole way across over the bottom, which is the whole way across. Cross multiply, and I get 8 times 15. I get 120 equals 80 plus 10x. So now all I'm doing is the algebra to solve for my x. Subtract 80 from both sides, I get 40 equals 10x, x equals 4. So that's how our side splitter theorem works. Then there's a corollary. So corollary means it's related to, it's along the same ideas. In this case, it's been extended. Now, instead of two parallel segments, and we're stuck in a triangle, I can have three parallel segments. And notice these are all parallel, and they are dividing two transversals, and I'm getting some distances in here. And I can say with the corollary, I can say that this distance between A and B over this distance between B and C, so these two distances that I'm highlighting in blue, that's going to be the same as over here between w and x and x and y. Same idea. So now let's look at a real life situation. We've got some campsites and they're not in a triangle but they do have some parallel lines and these two parallel lines, three of them, are cut four, one, two, three, four, are cut by two different transversals. And so this is a perfect setup for the corollary to our side splitter. And it says to find the missing lengths on each transversal. So I'm going to call this missing length here x, 
and this over one here, I'm going to call that one y. And so now I'm going to use my side splitter theorem to calculate x and y. So for x, I'm going to say that x over 8, so I'm using the 8 yards here, and I'm going to use the 9 and the 7.2 yards, that's going to equal 9 over 7.2. Now that's my geometry. I've used my side splitter theorem and I've written my proportion. Now just cross multiply and I get 7.2x equals 72x equals 10. So right here this is 10. Now to solve for y I'm going to use the 6.4 because that maps with y and I've got 8 and 7.2. So just like before, I am going to do 6.4 over 8 is going to equal y over 7.2. So just set up your proportion like we did before. And now let's cross multiply. I'm going to get 8y equals, I get 46.08. Now divide both sides by 8, and I get y equals 5.76. And these are yards, by the way. Don't forget your units. Okay. Perfectly all right to get a decimal. It's just a number. Now the next idea is the triangle angle bisector theorem. In this case, the segment, or ray in this picture, is bisecting an angle. And when that happens, we can write a proportion where we relate um, CA to BA, and then we can relate CD to DB. And the easy way to think of this is I take this um, ray that I have in here and I just extend it. I make it really long. And this is my fraction bar. And then one side is going to be all numerator and the other side is all denominator. That's the easiest way I've found to remember this. So for this first triangle, we're going to find the value of y. So extend this out. And then just pick one side to be your numerator and the other side to be your denominator. I like to go like this. I like to do the numerator on the left and the denominator on the right. Okay, so numerator, y over 24, because they're next to each other, they touch each other, equals 9.6 over 16, because those two are next to each other. So now I've set up my ratio using the triangle angle bisector theorem. Geometry is done. Now it's time to do the algebra, cross multiply and solve. 16y equals, do 9.6 times 24 on your calculator. I got 230.4. And then divide by 16. So right here is 14.4. Now let's look at this other one. Again, look at that segment in your triangle. Pretend it's a fraction bar. So I literally just extend that out to help me see it. Okay, so um, over here, let me just mark numerator. Numerator is going to be over here, and denominator is going to be down here. So I'm going to put in the numerator, I'm going to put x plus 4 and the denominator that's near it is the 2x plus 3. And that's going to equal, numerator is x minus 2 and the denominator nearest that is x. So there's my proportion. Now let's solve. x times x plus 4 equals 2x plus 3 times x minus 2. So I've done the cross multiply. We are going to get into quadratics on this one, but that's okay. 
we can handle it. x squared plus 4x, so just distribute. Now on the other side, I have to distribute each term one by one. First one I will distribute is the 2x. So I get a 2x squared. Now I'm going to distribute it to the second term. That's a minus 4x. So I'm all done distributing 2x. Now I'm going to distribute my 3. 3 times x, and then 3 times negative 2. So now I've got some quadratics going on here. Let's start combining like terms. So I get x squared plus 4x equals 2x squared minus x minus 6. Now anytime you have a quadratic to solve, you want to set one of your sides equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. I'm actually going to show it. That's going to leave me a 4x equals x squared minus x minus 6. And now subtract the 4x from both sides. I get 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now there are several ways to solve quadratics. The way I'm going to do here is solving by factoring. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the expression x squared minus 5x minus 6. Put x and then x. I'm looking for factors of negative 6. And they will have opposite signs because I have the negative here. And they're going to add to a negative 5. And if I use a negative 6 and a plus 1, that works. Okay, now what I'm going to do is what's called the zero product property. And what that says is anything that's multiplied by zero equals zero. So to get my zero over here on the left, x minus 6 can equal zero, or x plus 1 can equal zero. So now I've got two answers. I've got positive 6 and negative 1. Now if I go back and plug in to these lengths of the triangles, negative 1 is going to give me some negative side lengths. And that does not work for us. We can't have negative side lengths. So I'm going to um, discard the x equals negative 1, and my answer is going to be x equals 6. All right, thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great day.